Hey everyone, and welcome back to the galaxy. Today, we will be learning about the gradient tool. With this tool, we can create gradients, change their orientation, shape, color, and more. First, I will select the gradient tool. Let's go over the steps to create a simple gradient. GIMP comes with a list of pre-made gradients that you can access by clicking on the gradient thumbnail here. The foreground and background color will make up the first few gradients in this list. Edit them by changing the foreground and background colors here. After selecting a gradient, click and drag with your mouse on the canvas. To finalize a gradient, hit Enter. The gradient will apply to the current active layer. A gradient cannot be edited once finalized. Now, let's look at how to customize a gradient. First, I will drag out my gradient, and I can also hold Control on a Windows or Command on a Mac to make sure this is completely straight. After I've dragged out my gradient, notice how we have extra options on Canvas. We can change the start and end points and their positions. The start and end points will look like crosshairs. We can add more points of color by clicking anywhere on the gradient line. You will notice your cursor changes to a plus sign when you can add a point. To delete a point, click on it and then click this red X in the pop-out toolbox. You cannot delete the start or end points. If you hover in between points of color, a small white circle will appear. Adjusting this edits the blend of the two colors it is between. Watch as I drag it closer to one color, how the blend changes to become more abrupt. To change the points of color, click on the point, and in this pop-out dialog box, we can see options for colors. If we click on this, we can change it to our desired color. Starting and end points have an option for only one color, while middle points will have a right and left color option. The left and right options are natively linked, meaning changing one will change the other. But you can choose different colors for the left and right options by clicking on this chain and then adjust each color to what you want. See how it makes an abrupt line between these two colors we've chosen for the left and right. Now let's go over some extra tool options. The mode option Shares functionality with all other paint tools. Click the card in the top right hand corner to watch our video covering these common options. Opacity adjusts the transparency of our gradient. Note that you can only adjust the opacity of the gradient before you finalize it. Once it is finalized, to edit the opacity of this gradient, you will use the Layers dialog opacity bar. Next to the gradient picker, we can reverse our gradient quickly by clicking this button with arrows. Blend color space can affect the quality of the gradient created. Perceptual RGB is best used when your project is using an 8-bit color space. Linear RGB is best used when your project is using above an 8-bit color space. And CIE Lab is best used when you know your design will be converted to CMYK. Clicking the Shape dropdown, we will reveal some pre-made options. We can create spirals, circular gradients, and much more. After changing my shape back to linear, the repeat dropdown becomes active. Using this, we can continually repeat our gradient, 
creating a cool effect. Notice how the effect changes as I cycle through these options and edit my gradient on canvas. Trinicate causes the gradient to completely stop at the endpoints, as you can see by this abrupt line on either side. Offset determines where the color is placed in relation to the starting point of the gradient. Notice as I increase this number, the colors move further away from the starting point. Dithering will create the appearance of more color information between pixels. This is especially helpful if you are working in an 8 to 16 bit color space. Adaptive supersampling almost works like anti aliasing and will smooth out the edges of the gradient. Note that increasing these options can slow down your computer, especially the max depth slider. I couldn't find any extra info on the max depth and threshold options, but my guess is that threshold looks at the gradient convergent points, and max depth edits those convergent points to be smoother. Instant mode will immediately finalize your gradient as soon as you release your finger from the left mouse button. You can easily trigger this option by holding shift while you drag out a gradient. Modify Active Gradient will lock parts of your gradient. With this checked, I cannot edit any of the blend points or change the color of the endpoints. I also noticed that this option was not available after I created a custom gradient. And that's it. You now know how to use the gradient tool in GIMP. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, consider subscribing for more awesome content. Let us know if you found this tutorial helpful by liking this video and leaving us a comment. Thanks for watching.